The script for this video was written by a human in Notepad. Welcome back to another video. Today's subject is a computer I did a video on 12 years ago, but haven't said much about it since. It is my home everything server named Sox. Built in 2003 with an AMD Duron 1000, originally purchased for a car computer to play MP3s, it quickly became a home server for keeping email and some files handy with all the Windows reloads of my desktop machine. For a short time, it was used to host a website and forum from my apartment, and when I started playing with weather sensors, it hosted the database. Around 2011, I replaced the motherboard and processor with a Jetway Atom 330 model I pulled from my then desktop. It is that configuration that I posted a video of me trying to figure out how to quiet it down and keep it cool. One of the biggest upgrades to storage was in 2013 when I put two 3TB drives in in a RAID 1 configuration. The few stability issues I've had were related to using Gentoo Linux at first, unclean shutdowns with riser FS partitions, and the Jetway board. The Mark III upgrade with its AMD Athlon 2X2250 in 2016 had been the most stable with one exception. The power switch went bad and caused some really weird reboots and power offs in late 2020, which was no fun to diagnose from 5,000 miles away. Today I'm upgrading it with some parts I bought over the last year while in Alaska, and now that I'm back home, the upgrade can finally happen. I can't recall the last time it was cleaned out, so that is my first step. The case is from 2003, and I feel fortunate that it has two removable side panels instead of the entire top and sides coming off together. This one still has cardboard from the original shipping box in 2003 to help eliminate some noise and vibration. It has space inside for six 3.5 inch drives, two floppy drives, and four 5.25 inch drives. After a quick blowdown, I take it inside to start disassembly. Removed first is the OS drive, which holds a couple other partitions too. It is a Samsung 500GB drive spinning at 5400 RPM I put in service in 2014, retiring the first OS drive that had been in there about 9 years. The IDE drive is a Maxdoor 320GB drive that sounds quite horrible when it is running. The two 3TB Seagates I initially ran in an MD RAID and EXT4 file system, but a few years back I switched to ButterFS and its mirrored implementation. No issues, but while the other drives are encrypted, these two are not. About six months ago, when home, I noticed the noise that the Mac store was making, so I ordered this 240GB ADATA SU635 SSD to take over some of its backup duties. I will need to securely erase them all before getting rid of them. The DVD burner will come out and go into a computer I'm building for my wife. The power supply looks pretty good, but it really has only been in there for about two years. I did have a USB 3 expansion card so I could do external backups quicker, along with a floppy drive replacement bracket with two USB 3 ports on it. The case fan is old and I don't know if I'm going to reuse it here. The motherboard doesn't look that bad all things considered. I'll take it outside and blow it off again and wipe it down before the upgrade. The motherboard replacement is an MSI B560M Pro. It is a renewed board with all the accessories. I tested it while in Alaska and used it in my video on how to use Wake on LAN in Linux from an MSI board. Initially, I was going to use a Pentium G 6400T I picked up for $35, but instead I am using an i5 10400T, which I also picked up used. Cooling it will be an Arctic Alpine 12CO, which can run pretty quietly. Of course, the push turn retention tabs gave me some grief, but nothing that I couldn't overcome. For RAM, it will be running dual Patriot 8GB sticks that should run at a full 2666 megatransfers per second the CPU supports. With the new I.O. shield installed and the motherboard in place, the power supply with its spaghetti monster amount of cables is next. It is rated at 80 plus bronze and it test outs pretty efficient. Don't laugh too hard at my attempt at cable management. This case wasn't really built with that in mind. Replacing the DVD RW drive is a Blu ray burner. I have one in my XPS machine too for doing larger optical backups, which I don't actually run very often. 
Because SOX beat out B16 in my online community poll, it will be used now mainly for storage of my video project files, and for that I purchased two 6TB Western Digital RED Plus drives. The system drive is hiding under the heatsink on the motherboard. It is a 128GB Trident model. I have Debian 11 installed on it from my time testing it in Alaska, which I may stick with. I'll have links to where you can find out more about the drives in the video description. The front panel switch is bad, so I'm going to remove that and look for a replacement. In the meantime, I'll use the reset switch. With it all put together, will it turn on first try? It does, and makes a little more noise than I'd like. I think that is more the power supply than the CPU fan though. The Western Digital drives also make a racket when spinning up, but aren't that bad once they are running. I've never really been concerned with benchmarks with previous builds of my home server. It has always just done what I wanted it to, so upgrades have come as the hardware becomes obsolete and I look for further power savings. Power draw with the Athlon 2 system was around 45 watts with only the system drive running, which was probably 98% of the time. The lowest I can see with this MSI board and the i5 is about 23 watts with the storage drive spun down. I also previously tested this motherboard with the Pentium Gold G6400T and its idle power draw was no lower. I don't plan on running SOX 24-7 anymore, instead offloading those always on tasks to my Odroid C4 for now. The one benchmark I do have that was run on both machines is Sysbench. From this graph, we can of course see there is some improvement in the scores. Tell me what you think. Is this overkill for my situation? Want to know more about any of the components in this build? What about the operating system and file storage layout? Let me know in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification button so you won't miss any of my videos. Until next time, I'm Good Monkey. Thanks for watching. I hope that it wasn't terrible.